it's funny. Uh, Bill Walsh, way back, uh, you know, about 30 years ago, he, uh, when asked about the state of the NFL offenses, he said, you know, if we ran a, a wing T or a single T, you know, if we, if we ran a, a wing T formation like they did back in college 40 years ago, he said, defense, wouldn't have any idea how to stop it. He said, we'd, and we'd have a lot of success, at least for a short period of time. That might be what we're looking at here at the Chip Kelly system, where he put in a certain system, certain type of play calling and is structured that, you know, this is what we're going to do, and it, it caught defenses by surprise. They're used to playing against certain types of schemes, and uh, for a while it worked, and then, you know, uh, it, after a time, he started to catch up, and, and we, we said this a thousand times about Chip Kelly the past couple of years, you better have a plan B, and right now it doesn't look like he has it, and, that, and that's why, you know, now teams are caught up, and the Eagles are where they are. Casey, let's look at them on from an offensive standpoint. Is this wrong personnel? Uh, Chip Kelly not a creative enough play caller. When you look at the Eagles' offense, where do their issues start from, and are they fixable with what they have on the roster? Uh, you can only do you can only make so many changes in a given year. You can't try and change everything all at once. And over the past couple of years, they've said let's move our quick, fast playmakers, you know, our vertical playmakers, let's get them out of the offense, let's find bigger receivers and get them in the offense, let's make some offensive line changes, let's make some quarterback changes. You're not giving anybody a chance to grow in the system, and the, a lot of the changes are intentional changes. Now, hey, if you have an injured quarterback and you get a backup, that's one thing, but the Eagles have been switching from quarterback to quarterback to quarterback, and it isn't because of injuries, it's because they want different quarterbacks in there. And, you know, same with the offensive line and same with the skill position players, and it's like you, you've got to you've got to eventually come to a point where you say we can't keep making personnel changes. We've got to find the guys we want and get those guys to move in. And it looks like they they started to make that this year, but you know obviously it's not working. So, uh, I, but I think some continuity in this offense of the past couple seasons would have been if they would have had some continuity from two years ago to today, more than what they've had. I think it'd be a big difference. Um, I had said before, you know, the Evan Mathis decision seems to be one that has really hurt this team for a couple of reasons. One. Left guard's been an issue. The guard play's been terrible, too. He plays left guard. It gives you competition between the two guys who are starting now to play right guard. You gave those two guys contracts. At least you make them earn it. And I think it really showed the locker room, uh, really was the first crack in that locker room, that Mathis was a popular guy, and you just cut him without giving him the opportunity to come in here and prove uh, that he wasn't going to hold out. Yeah, it's the one thing that it seems to be like the common denominator between all these players. Uh, you know, why people are upset about leaving? Because some of the players are like, "Oh, we've got to, we've got to leave the Eagles. We're going somewhere else." And you kind of you, you look at like, "Why are you guys getting frustrated?" Because you know this this is life in the NFL. Sometimes you're going to have to move teams, and I think that's what it came down to. Those the players said, "Look, we like playing in Philadelphia, and we did exactly what the coaches wanted us to do, and they still moved us out. We we did a good job." If you're you know if you're Jeremy Mack, and you're like, "Hey, you know, I did everything you asked me to do. Why let me go?" If you're Lashawn McCoy. Look, look, I did everything you asked me to do, I pr- and I produced for you, and you still let me go. And if you let those players go, it does get to the left, rest of the locker room that, hey, it doesn't matter if we do our job or not. We still might not have job security here, even if we do exactly what we're supposed to do. And that's something that's it's hard to overcome. Um, defensively, if you watch this team for the first nine games, Casey, one thing you could say at least is this team's pretty good on defense. I mean, if they're going to win the division, it's because they had the best defense in the NFC East. They've given up 90 points in the last four days of games. What has happened to them on the defensive side of the ball? I'll give you a couple of metrics here. Uh, looking at the well, ESPN stats information keeps track of how many yards are gained before defensive contact when you're running the ball and how many yards are gained after defensive contact. When the defender finally makes first contact with the running back. Uh, Eagles have given up 245 yards before contact the past two games. It's the worst in the league. Bad news on, t- on top of that. They've given up 146 yards after contact, also the worst in the league. So you don't even get to the running back before he gets gains a lot of yards, and even once you get up to him, he's still going to gain more yards. That's a lot. That's when it comes to run defense, and you have those kinds of numbers. That's usually around effort more than just anything else. And the Eagles have talent on defense, like they showed the first nine weeks. And this is this is an effort level thing, and it's and that's the most troubling part of the last two weeks is defensive effort. Uh, I would agree because, uh, you know, you're watching the team with effort. Is it effort or are they hitting that Chip Kelly wall where they're on the field so many plays because of that offense struggling and the way they try to play pace? Uh, is it effort or out of gas? 
I wouldn't be surprised if it's both. We saw him run out of gas last year. It's you know, it, it's like uh, George Allen back in the day. This is you know, it's kind of similar but a little different. George Allen back in the day, probably 40 years ago, he liked to build teams that were you know, veteran teams, older teams. And he said, oh, these guys won't make mistakes. And you look at how they did late in the season, and they always collapse late in the season. I think you might be looking at the same thing with Chip Kelly from a different perspective. And, that, yeah, you're right. That, yeah, you run that pace football, and you guys say you can keep up more than anybody else. Well, you could do it in college because you can rotate, you know, 120 players out of the lineup. You can't do that in the pros, and it looks like it's catching up to them. Uh, talking with Casey Joyner here, ESPN.com. Of course, uh, the Eagles embarrassed again against the Lions team. They're going to play New England coming up uh, next week, and we'll dive more into that game on Thursday's show. But, uh, you know, uh, it looks like right now that this team has virtually quit on the coach. I mean, that's what a lot of people would surmise. Uh, that uh, look, they gave up. They don't want to play anymore. Does it? This team as a fifty-three man whole. I'm not saying every single guy, but does it look like a team that is looking to the off season? Uh, yeah, I, I just, when you look at a lot of things on tape, you look at a lot, just a lot of things. I can mention defensive effort levels, and you can't fake defensive effort levels, and especially when you're stopping the running game. And that's it. Looks like yeah, because talent wise, again, we've talked about before all season that this team talent wise is look, they're not the best team in the league, but it's a upper half of the league and probably top 10 team. This is not a team that should not be in first place in the NFC East right now. All right. Uh, if you look at the NFC East, it's a lot of it's a lot of painful football. Uh, but these final five games, what do we got? Who, who's who's going to separate themselves from this mess? I still wouldn't be surprised to see the Giants do it just because it's a, it's a Coughlin thing when this team gets up against the wall. They tend to play their best football. I mean, Washington's playing pretty well, but I wouldn't be surprised to see the Giants, because they get their backs up against the wall, finally get things together and say go 4-1 and one and take the division. That'd be, that's what I think is going to happen. All right. Uh, of course, uh, plenty more football to go, but whew, we got. Uh, I think I looked at the uh, winning percentage of the teams left. Washington's schedule looks to be the easiest down the stretch. Philadelphia, the toughest, and then Dallas – and New York somewhere right around 60% winning percentage of their team. So it looks like Washington does have the inside track if they can hold on here. But you know what? They haven't won back-to-back football games the whole year. <laughs> they are not. Yeah, they're, they're a very inconsistent group. And that defense, I mean, we talk about the Eagles, the effort levels for their defense. The, uh, the, uh, Washington, it's still it's a talent issue for them. And the Culliver just went out, too, so they're down on another player. I mean, that that's... That's the secondary that if they face any good offenses at all, it's going to be really challenging for them to win. All right. Uh, we'll dive into that game against uh, New England. Come up. I don't know how New England keeps doing it. I don't know what they were I know they didn't win the game last night, uh, but for them to be in that game was unbelievable. I don't, I don't know who was catching passes. Were you? Did you have a reception last night? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> all right, man. I'll talk to you Thursday.